Hey everyone, happy Thursday, February 15th. It's about uh, 1030 on the West Coast and time for another market updates. Uh, so this week we were hoping to bounce back after that BLS jobs report sent the markets into a little bit of a skid uh, with the CPI inflation report for January coming out on Tuesday. But unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that did not go in our favor. Um, you know, as estimated coming out, the headline was supposed to go up about 0.2% and went up 0.3%. The core also beat expectations and went up 0.4 compared to 0.3. Uh, taking a closer look, um, the headline did drop because remember, it's replacing numbers from last year. So the January number last year was uh, plus 0.6, I believe. Uh, so it did drop to 3.1. The core remained unchanged, but we were really expecting the core to drop to about 3.8. The markets were especially. And really, if you look at these numbers, um, the shelter at 0.6 um, month over month, that's a big jump. Um, you know, that annualized out, what is that, 7.2%. Um, so we know that shelter in the real world is coming down. Um, but in these reports, that's a, you know, that was a big jump one. So that's really what, uh, you know, set us back. You know, if that came in a little bit more what we would expect, we probably would have had a little bit better numbers up here. Uh, coming in our favor uh, was used cars, which was good to see because that does match up with reality. Used cars indexes have been showing you know those prices dropping, and energy uh, came in in our favor, which is good. Uh, motor vehicle insurance, like we talked about, has still been skyrocketing. A lot of that has to do with things outside of the control of the Fed, like you know uh, accidents are way up, and um, you know claims you know due to disasters or a lot of theft, a lot more theft is up. So that's making insurance go up, and obviously you know price uh, you know rate rate hikes don't affect that. Um, so CPI came in higher than expected. Markets did not like that. Uh, rates jumped quite a bit, I think, that day, about almost a fifth of a point just on that news alone. Because like we talked about, you know, the Fed is looking at, you know, the one thing they have been hanging their hat on is inflation's coming down. So with inflation, you know, a, a report coming out going up, it worries the markets that, hey, we're going to have to wait even longer for the Fed to do a rate cut. Uh, next thing we got was today, actually, this helped a little bit, was retail sales. Uh, like we talked about before, you know, the, the American consumers seems to be, you know, we're propping up the economy by spending a lot of money. And, you know, December's were really high and that, you know, didn't help us. This one came in better, though. This one it was expected to drop uh, about negative 0.1%. It almost dropped a full percent, uh, negative 0.8%. Uh, so, you know, what does that show? Is that, you know, does the consumer or the, our, as an American consumer, are we slowing down and, you know, not going to prop up the markets as much? Um, and it's interesting because I was going to share this as well from a couple of days before, but, you know, the buy now, pay later uh, type programs have really jumped up across America. A lot of people were using those. It's like 88 million Americans or 34 percent of adults uh, used one in 2023. It's up 12% in one year, which is a big jump. And those have bigger payments. You know, if you had $1,100, you've spent $1,100 on the holidays uh, doing, um, you know, normal credit card debt versus uh, buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay later, a cost per month is $200. Credit card is 32 a lot of people did these buy now, pay later. A lot of people are missing payments, missed payments last year. So, you know, with those retail sales numbers dropping, is that a sign of, you know, the American consumer, you know, basically having to catch up or having to pay the bills, all the stuff we did for Christmas and the holidays, we're having to pay those now and we spent less in January. Um, you know, like I said, that's, you know, if we want, uh, you know, if we want to uh, show a good sign that the economy is slowing down, stop spending money. Um, and then, you know, like I said, then the Fed could see that, you know, retail sales won't be as high, a uh, job strength will be less because if we stop spending money, then they'll probably cause some job loss, which we don't want. But those are all the kind of things the Fed needs to see before probably we get our first rate cut. Uh, next thing we got, initial job claims came in again really weak uh, compared to, you know, drop, the estimate was 220, came in at 212. Uh, continuing claims did jump to uh, about 1.9 million, which I think is the highest level since uh, 2021, November 2021. So, again, you know, people, it seems like employers are holding on their employees as long as they can. When people do lose jobs, they're having a harder and harder time finding a job. We know there's more second jobs, uh, part-time work, things like that. So, on the surface, it looks really strong job market, but, you know, there might be some cracks here with the retail sales coming down, uh, you know, the job claims, you know, staying steady, but, uh, you know, things like that where we've seen hiring slow down and, and so forth. Uh, miscellaneous stuff. So, NHAB, so the National Association of Home Builders came out with their uh, price index. So basically, you know, their optimism index, how, how do they feel about things? And they're, it's going up a little bit. Um, and you see this quote from their uh, their chair, uh, we anticipate that due to pent up demand, many more buyers will enter the marketplace if mortgage rates continue to decline this year. Um, I hope so, Alicia. I hope mortgage rates continue to climb and you guys get a lot more uh, buyers. Uh, but you can see it kind of uh, dropped down in 34 November. It's been going up since then as rates have been getting better. Um, you know, builders tend to be pessimistic bunch, uh, but anything above 50, they're feeling positive. So we're getting closer back back to that level. So it'll be interesting to see how that number goes as uh, the year goes along. 
Uh, and the next thing, Austin Goldsby, uh, he's a, the Fed uh, president for Chicago. He actually calmed the markets a little bit. He came out after that CPI report and said, you know, look, the PCE report, which comes out later this month, is more important. Um, that one, and that's actually true if you look at the numbers, the PCE doesn't weigh shelter as much as the CPI. And we know that, like we just talked about, that shelter number was a lot higher in the CPI than, it, you know, than we expected. So basically, he said, hey, we're already restrictive enough. You know, we think we're doing enough. Inflation's heading in the right direction, even given that CPI one, we can't change course, things like that. So it was good to see, uh, you know, a voice of reason coming out of the Fed in Chicago. Uh, so where does that leave us? The average 30 year, uh, it was 6.97 last week, is at 7.03 today. Um, so it actually dropped down. We were, I think we we're up closer to 7.15 um, earlier this week. So, you know, got some, you know, with that, the, the retail sales and Austin Goolsby making some positive comments for us that, you know, Made the markets come down a little bit, but still a lot higher than we like to be. You know, like I said, we talked about um, get down like close to that 6.5, and it seems that's been a barrier for us. And we keep getting kicked back up to the 7.0 number. Uh, some important dates coming up. We got the PPI, uh, in, um, you know, producer price inflation tomorrow. So it'll be interesting to see what that comes after that CPI. Hopefully that goes in our favor, and you know that's a reasonable number, which it has been. It's been really, really, really low. And like I said, um, on February 29th, uh, the only one, you know, it's a leap year, so we actually have a February 29th this year. The PCE report comes out, so hopefully that's a lucky one for us. Um, and that one, you know, heads in our direction. And then after that, there's a couple other reports. The CPI will come out again before this Fed meeting. BLS is going to be a big one, but you know, we got to make sure, like we talked about, inflation needs to keep coming down. Uh, job strength, you know, either stay where it's at or start to show some weakness, and that will make the Fed, you know, maybe back off a little bit. But also keep in mind that you know, rates coming down, like we've talked about, isn't necessarily the best thing for buyers. Um, you know, you go to buy a home right now, you're going to you know, be able to get maybe some seller credits. You don't have as much competition. Whereas if rates drop tomorrow to five and a half, the amount of people, you know, millions of people would literally millions of people would rejoin the marketplace and be looking to buy a home and it would be competitor with you. So just keep in that mind, if you can afford a home right now, probably best to get in now before rates do drop, because then it's going to go back to more of a seller's market and, and harder to buy. So, you know, if anybody needs anything at all, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, uh, have a great week and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.